Oh, sorry, lad. Mistook you for a Kennedy. Hello, all, and welcome to a very sad time. Netflix has not renewed Inside Job for a third season. However, there is a rumor going around that Adult Swim may pick up this amazing show. But even if this rumor is false and this show may be over, we will still talk about some major things within it. In the last video, we discussed Alex Hirsch's involvement in Inside Job and how he was able to connect this world with his old show, Gravity Falls, through small easter eggs. But now we are going to start looking at the actual show itself and the world and story that Shion, the creator, crafted through it. So, what question could we possibly answer about this show? Well, there's a really big one that needs to be answered. What is the plan that's centered around Reagan, or in other words, what is Project X-37? No more secrets. It is done. The pact is sealed. It's time to begin Project X-37. We have heard this shadow board constantly talk about Slash 2 Reagan, and the show ended in a very ominous way. So what is this plan, and why is it centered around Reagan? Well, the best place to start is the beginning, but not the beginning of the show, but rather the beginning of our known timeline. In the final episode of Season 2, we get a rather thorough backstory of the Robes' history. We see that they were human based on the history lesson in the final episode of Season 2. They mention that a fraction of early humans were born smarter than their fellow cavemen, and they realize that without intervention, their species would not survive. This led to intervention from the smarter humans. This brought about the birth of the very first society, which confirms that they were at some point human, but somehow they can no longer be classified as such based on this comment by one of the Robe members. You really don't think Reagan will see this coming? How could she? She's only human. They somehow surpass the description of a human and into a new form of being, a smarter variant of humans. Not only are these black robes greater than human in intelligence, but they also have access to abilities that normal humans do not. During the story of the first secret society, we can see the original black robe suiting up, but then doing a blood ritual on a strange device. This blood ritual has a visible effect with these rays of light that explode from the center of this device. These black robes are obviously way more advanced than the normal human, with both a greater intelligence and more knowledge about the surrounding world around them. We continue up the said timeline and learn about how the robes influenced many major and terrible events in the timeline of humanity. They released the Black Plague when humanity was at the brink of overpopulation, and in quarantine, Sir Isaac Newton discovered gravity. They burned down the rainforests to stop sentient trees from overthrowing humanity. They sunk the Titanic to prevent an Atlantean invasion fleet. They defend their actions by saying that what appears on the surface to be chaos is actually a complex system serving a greater good. They defend these actions by stating that they must save humanity from itself. So, now that we understand what the Shadow Board is and what their intentions are, we can now start asking what is their plan with Reagan? Why is she so important? Well, let's take a look at her. Reagan is a super genius. She is extremely smart and talented in her field, but she's also very adaptable. When she creates something that goes haywire, she learns from her mistakes. She creates Alpha Beta, a perfect AI, and it starts a quest to destroy humanity. But once that started, she's able to put a stop to it and contain it in a glass cylinder. Slowly, she gives it more and more freedom as it proves itself and shifts its primary directive away from global destruction. She was able to take something so powerful and deadly and turn it completely around. By the end of Season 2, Alpha Beta was actively working to help them and showed Reagan every possible option that her life can lead so that she can find the best option for herself. Where most people would have given up or decided that something isn't possible, she took it one step further and it paid off. She's shown this ability to adapt and forgive multiple times in this show. Alpha Beta, who she turned from murderous AI to helpful friend. 
Nostalgia Brett, who she was able to completely bond with and understand for the first time in the show, saving an entire town. Even Keanu Reeves, who she finally accepted as somehow changed his ways from being a blood-sucking A-list actor to a genuine and nice person. This is an ability that the black robes just don't possess. When something goes wrong, they just send that thing to the black site, like what they did to JR and Rand Ridley. Both of them defied orders from the Shadow Board multiple times, and they were sent to the most secure prison imaginable. The only quote-unquote second chance that they gave was to Rand Ridley when they made him CEO after he was fired, but this can't even count. Rand wasn't fired by the Shadow Board, he was fired by JR, so the Shadow Board was never aware of what he truly did, and in so, could not provide forgiveness. This is a HUGE reason why the Shadow Board would seek out Reagan. She continues to prove herself time and time again in an aspect that the robes could never possess. This isn't the only reason for why they would seek out Reagan. A big problem with the Shadow Council is that they rule with fear. As we have seen countless times in the show, when someone rules with fear, there will be coups, there will be assassination attempts, there will be takeovers, and it's only a matter of time before this affects the Shadow Board if they haven't been affected by it already. But there's one person in this show who hasn't ruled that way. Reagan Ridley. In the very short time that we have seen her as CEO of Cognito Inc., she performed so well that she got standing ovations and even got someone as distant as Mike to say that he would both kill and die for her. This is the type of loyalty that the Shadow Council has never received before, and Reagan got this within her first few minutes in charge. There is one big problem here. If the Shadow Board wants Reagan for a beneficial reason, then what is the reason for their ominous conversation at the end of Season 2? It is done. The pact is sealed. It's time to begin Project X-37. You really don't think Reagan will see this coming? How could she? She's only human. So that's our big question that we started the video with. What is their big plan? What is Project X-37? Well, we know the Shadow Board likes control, but Reagan doesn't really like to follow anyone's orders. She does her own thing no matter what anyone tells her, and if people do tell her what to do, she will make a binder with a plan to take over their position, and as we've seen, it works. JR tried to control her, and now he's in the Black Sight prison with her father, another person who tried to control her. So then why would they make Reagan a partner if she would just do her own thing? Well, I can think of two reasons. The first would be that if Reagan wasn't a partner, she wouldn't be able to make the algorithm that could run the world. I don't think any human is fit to govern humanity. But I could create an algorithm that could. It's what I've always wanted to make for the office, but I could make it for the entire world! Shit, all right, yes. When could you start? We saw how much the robes enjoyed this algorithm, and if she wasn't a partner, this plan would never come to fruition. If she remained in her current position, she would keep trying to take over Cognito, something she's wanted to do since she was six. If she was CEO of Cognito, she would keep trying to make only Cognito better, as we saw with her plan. She would continue focusing solely on Cognito to finally help better the lives of its valued and usually mistreated employees. But if she is a partner, then she could focus on the entire world. She would never be able to make that algorithm of hers on a global scale unless she is a partner. But again, how would this algorithm help the actual Shadow Board themselves if Reagan is just gonna do her own thing like usual? Well, now we go on to our second reason. The Shadow Board can easily influence Reagan without her knowing it. We have seen them discuss this in the Season 2 finale. The robes tell Reagan that she is the obvious choice to replace JR, but her irrational attachment to her father held her back. To get around this, they made Reagan see her father as a villain that controls her life until she finally just sees him as another person and even brings him to Shadow Prison X no longer attached to him. They are able to control her actions by influencing her emotions and attachment to other people. They have even seen how effective these tactics are on Reagan through her father. Her father was always being monitored by the Shadow Board as we saw in Episode 7 of Season 2. Rand Ridley and JR made a time machine. This time machine, which they called Project Reboot, completely changed the world. 
It started a new timeline by creating random changes to the present. Rand lost his mustache, and instead of having two moons, there was only one. With a machine that altered reality itself, it got some unwanted attention. The Shadow Board ended up giving Rand and JR a job modernizing Cognito Inc. But because of their previous debacle, they would keep monitoring them as we have seen them do many times throughout this show. If they were monitoring them, they would have noticed how Rand influenced Reagan. He would bring Reagan into his lab in Cognito and erase and adjust Reagan's memories to easily influence and deceive her. With this knowledge, the Black Robes have another way to influence Reagan without her knowing, but what if there was yet another? Throughout this show, Reagan almost never gets praise, especially not from her family. The only person she ever receives praise and gratitude from is Brett, and we can see how close they are because of it. When Reagan was in the Shadow Board layer, she talked about the plan for her perfect algorithm to run the world, and the board wholeheartedly accepted. Because of this sub-level praise, she ended up running away from her entire planned life for the idea that she could do some real good. She left Ron and accepted to work for the Shadow Board. The idea of doing so much good in the world in a free reign environment, combined with the praise and gratitude from the robes, can easily lead to a situation of pseudo-dependence, and therefore yet another way that the robes can control Reagan. While not able to tell Reagan what to do, they can always influence her, which like they say in the last sentence of Season 2, is something that she won't see coming because she is only human. But the robes already control the world, so why would they go along with Reagan's plan? Well, the robes don't actually control the whole world. There are still many people that are uninfluenced by the robes. With this algorithm that would predict the best possible outcomes based on human behavior, the robes can truly run every human being on Earth. And now that we know they can still influence Reagan, they can control the algorithm and continue to run the world however they want to, now with everybody under their control. So finally, we answer the question, what is Project X-37? If we put together all the evidence we have collected, we reach a conclusion. Project X-37 is the final step in total world domination. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to reinforce again that this is still just a theory, and like any theory, new information can come out in the future that could disprove or even reinforce this specific idea. If you want me to take a look at any specific concepts, theory, show, or any other form of media, comment it down below. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.